Hey folks, Ray from DCGarmerica.com here. Take a look at the new Garmin Edge Explorer. This is a $249 full color and touchscreen turn-by-turn navigational mapping device. It basically takes the Edge 1030, which looks almost identical to it right here, shrinks it a tiny bit. So it's not nearly as small as something like the Edge 520 Plus or the Edge A20. And this gives you almost all the same features as this, except for some of the more competitive features. So for example, this does not have power meter support and does not have Strava Live segment support. It does, however, allow you to download from Strava routes. It uploads to Strava. All that's the same. It has full Connect IQ apps on there. It connects to heart rate straps and bike lights and radar just not power meters and, and yeah, and that's basically it. It's really, really impressive. Uh, I've been using it out here today and for the last three or four weeks, um, and out here it's been great. So we're right on the border between uh, the Netherlands and Germany. This morning we went for about a 50K ride, and we didn't really know exactly where we wanted to go, so we basically just stuck a town about 20K that way on the unit here. We just said a little you know, a, a monument right there on the town and called that done, and then we loosely followed the instructions it gave trying to follow the river along here. So we didn't like follow it 100%, but we used it as a bit of a guide mark, which is sort of what's ideal in touring the idea that you can kind of just follow along as you see fit between two points uh, and just keep on going the right general direction the same thing for the way back we use this as sort of a guide mark to get back to here and we just sort of meandered on on beautiful dutch countryside um, but one of the challenges garments had with the edge explorer in the past has been the price they used to have this at like three four almost five hundred dollars for this unit and it just didn't make any sense it was way way overpriced at 249 that's freaking incredible. I mean, that's that you got to keep this in mind. This is like a hundred fifty plus dollar price drop from what it used to be in the past. Um, but it has all the same kind of core functionality, like things like Connect IQ apps and, and all that jazz. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the interface on this just so you can feel, see what it's like. I'll do it here on the bike, but I'll show you some video from out on the ride this morning. Uh, and then we'll kind of talk about where it fits in the entire lineup of bike computers on the market today. Okay, so here we are on the front of the unit. This is the main dashboard. In a lot of ways, it looks very similar to an Edge 1030. There are just less options. For example, you don't have the training option to do structured training on it. Uh, instead, you've just got the ability to ride, you've got where you wanna go, and you've got courses. And then down at the bottom here, you have your Connect IQ apps. So any apps you download, that could be e-bike apps, it could be Strava routes, it could be Bond Traeger stuff. Like there's tons and tons of apps out there. And this really does give you a lot of flexibility. For example, you technically could download an app to record power meter data for this if you wanted to. Um, there's an app out there that does that that I use actually for testing reasons. Uh, so that's something you could technically do. It's just not going to flow into all the normal power meter fields on apps like Strava and Training Peaks. But it does record the data. In any case, that, that's getting too distracted here. Um, so if I were to go ahead and click on ride this just brings me to normal ride fields and i can swipe through these right here um, so this right there is uh, my you know speed average you can customize all these as you see fit by just going into uh, the settings so i go down there ride settings data screens um, now you don't have a ton of data screens compared to some of the higher end units but that's all right you've got your screen one right there i can tweak out the layouts and the data fields so you can see six of data fields selected i can go ahead and add them i can say uh, distance elevation i could say elevation uh, give me go ahead and total ascent as well and then i'm back here and i'm done uh, and now you'll see you'll, that total ascent will be there once i click the checkbox there check again and go back to the home screen ride and now total scent is on there as well so again tons and tons of data fields that i can choose um, i've got two totally custom pages and i got a bunch of kind of standard pages like this navigational page here uh, this is the maps again full color maps full detailed maps the maps are based on where the unit is bought and from so if you're in north america as this unit was initially is north america maps if you're in europe it's european maps if you go across borders uh, beyond your region so to speak uh, where you bought it then you don't have the right maps for that region so you have to download them garmin makes this a pain in the butt and you have to go pay for those maps from Garmin, but you can use third parties that are free, and I'll link to the video down below or something like that on that, and that's exactly what I did here. So this is technically a North American unit. I downloaded the European free maps. It took me like less than 60 seconds to do that. I put them on the unit and I was good to go. Now I can see all the detail around me here uh, in uh, the Netherlands and just across the way in Germany. Um, so oh, just to look at like reroute and stuff and how fast this is, the redraw rate is really actually quite good here. Oops. So I go click on the little hand so I can move around. Um, this is nice. I mean, this is almost like phone speed. You know, a lot of people complain about that on Garmin stuff, which is, you know, kind of valid and kind of not. Like, I don't really care as long as it's like this efficient. It doesn't need to be like instantaneous phone. But like the Edge 520 Plus, the redraw took forever, and that is, that it's a non-starter for me. So this is awesome. It's super quick. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll swipe out of this. There we go, to go to the right. So you can see the menu there. I can just go right, 
and there we are. Uh, this is the elevation. In this case, I haven't gone anywhere, so it's not going to populate my heading, my current elevation, uh, heart rate, and average heart rate connecting to an AMP Plus heart rate strap or a Bluetooth smart heart rate strap. And then here we have a compass, speed, and distance, and I'm back to the beginning. Um, but again, I can customize these different pages as, set, as I see fit. And as you're riding along, you're going to have the data displayed on that makes more sense in these zeros. So you can see right now, uh, mid-ride out there, as I'm just cruising along uh, the different data pages, I can swipe through those pretty easily there using just my thumbs, even as I'm filming, which, which isn't too bad. So going back to the main page here, let's look at some of the navigational pieces. Uh, so I'll click on where to. This allows me to go ahead and browse the map. So I could just like, um, I can also search somewhere. So I can go into a city. I can search for cities around me and say I want to go to that city right there and that's that simple um, I can go back and choose a point of interest so up here I can choose a food and drink spot I can choose a category uh, let's see it's find something it's obviously I'm international so let's do that so international um, and we'll try to find something around here that's that's quote international which probably was the worst possible category to choose but there we go we got some options right here uh, go back and you can see there's different point of interest categories and so this is actually how we found a coffee shop down the ways a little bit um, and so it's just it works really really well save locations like could save like this spot right here if I wanted to um, or I could add spots into there uh, so not too bad courses I can download courses um, that are from Garmin Connect um, that I create there or I can bring in you know uh, TCX and fit files and other courses like that or I can do round trip courses so I could ch choose a distance let's say 25 miles current location I don't care what start direction and search and it's going to go off and create a looped course for me um, now theoretically we could have done this this morning but we kind of wanted to go along the river for the fun of it and so this is sort of what we chose um, and this usually takes between like 20 and 60 seconds to come back with some routes for you depending on how complex the train is around here okay so it completed the first route it's coming back with three routes every single time we'll just look at the first route right now and now it's got the second route so I click on this here I'll just tell it to stop searching and there we go, that first route. And now you can see this route that it's created there. Um, and I can click on ride and I'm off to go off to the races. And so in this case, it was 30 miles. That was the route I could find in roughly that 25 category um, there. And, and these are actually usually pretty good. They're based on popularity data, which is in this unit itself. So the data from Garmin Connect about where people ride. Now, if you were like me and you download a third party maps, you'll get all the bike routes and stuff like that. No problem as I have here, but you will not get the popularity data that Garmin bakes on top of those maps. So minor differences there. Uh, just something to keep in mind if you're outside of the region. I do wish Garmin made it a heck of a lot easier to download their own maps from their site. Um, after all, everyone else in the entire industry does except Garmin. I, I'm going to keep on harping on it until they change it. From a sensor standpoint, I can swipe down there. Um, this is a control, so I get like, you know, notifications and missed calls up here. Uh, and it's connected to my phone right now. I can go to sensors. Here's some of the sensors that I have. So heart rate, I have a cadence sensor. I have more heart rate straps. I have lights down there. I can go and add sensor. You can see cadence, edge remote, e-bike, heart rate, light, radar, speed cadence, speed, and verb. That's Garmin's action camera. I can pair all those and, and dig into them just like you normally expect. You've got battery, GPS. I can turn the brightness up there like that. So that might make it a little bit clearer for you. Um, to see what things are going on. Uh, keep in mind, this is on a slight angle right now because of where the camera is. So if I go like this, you can see it's actually super crisp screen right there. Uh, but just the way I have the camera mounted in the bike and everything is a little bit easier for me to do that there. Uh, it is quarter turn mount on the back, of course. Barometric altimeter, AMP Plus, Bluetooth Smart. Still using uh, micro USB for charging, unfortunately, um, as opposed to USB-C. But I guess that's kind of Garmin's thing in, in life at this point in time. Um, I do not believe I have any Connect IQ apps on here yet at this point in time but their goal is to basically make anything that's seen for the edge uh, 1000 to automatically show up as compatible here on the edge explorer uh, of course individual developers can make apps available on the edge explorer as well it's just uh, uh, kind of an out of box thing as to where they're starting from Finally, digging into the settings very, very briefly here. Um, you can see history here, oops, of rides that I've done. So different rides over the last little while right there uh, that I've had. I can go back here, it's like the ride for today, for example, a 50K ride, 30 miles. Um, I can look at the map of that there as soon as it finishes loading it up. So this is the map. And you can see what we did there. We kind of went uh, up here, down there, along the river, and then all the way back up on this side there. Um, so super easy. That rendered pretty darn quickly. I can see my summary stats on that. Um, we stopped a bunch and all that. So uh, not a lot of elevation and whatnot out here in the middle of kind of just these rolling, rolling terrain there. So clicking on back, uh, we get some stats information here. So example, training zones show up, heart rate zones. I can specify those if I want to. Um, I can go into personal records and see furthest distance fastest 40k most ascent um, those are sort of the basic stats that you would expect there 
Uh, from a connected feature standpoint, you do still get group track, which is cool, so you can see other riders in your group. You do get instant detection, so if you crash the bike, it'll actually notify your contacts that you crashed and tell them unless you tell it to stop. Um, so all of that works uh, pretty darn well. Download complete, you probably just download an update right now for me. And then to here, you've got this interesting little feature called guest mode. Um, so guest mode is designed for like touring companies that they can enable this and they can go ahead and set a pin code so that people can't screw with the settings. So like a lot of the settings are set as is, but you can still use the bike as a bike computer. Uh, so kind of a neat little feature, uh, really more for the touring market, especially in Europe, where they want to be able to put these units out there uh, and have customers use them, uh, like as in bike company customers use those. Uh, beyond that, this is all sort of like standard issue stuff here that you would expect um, from a settings and all that. Uh, you'll notice here now in guest mode, it has that little G up top there. Uh, so finally on the bottom, you do have the standard lap button there, start stop button there, and power button and light right there. Okay, so who would I recommend this unit to? I would say basically folks that don't have a power meter and don't care about Strava Live segments. Uh, so my dad actually falls right into that bucket where he doesn't have a power meter today, doesn't care about Strava Live segments, but he does want something that's easy to read, that's kind of big letters, all that kind of stuff, uh, mapping what he wants it, can route, can turn by turn. This is sort of perfect for him. And if you compare it to something like the Wahoo Bolt, uh, in the case of the Wahoo Bolt and the Element, obviously it's a black and white screen, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, and it does sort of turn by turn navigation, but you can't go off route. Whereas this, when I go off route, it takes my new road and then it remaps me onto that or reroutes me based on that road to wherever I need to go. With something like the Bolt, it just gives you a kind of directional compass as to the direction to go. And that's true of a lot of other bike computers in this category. I'm not aware of anything at all at $249 or even at $299 that is legit turn-by-turn -turn navigation. If you talk something like the new Sigma Rocks 12, that's I think uh, $400-ish, $499, something like that. that's way up there. Um, if you look at something like the Polar V650, that's not turn-by-turn -turn navigation and that's in the same sense here. Uh, there really isn't. The Lazines units, uh, those are cheaper, but again, they're not color, they're not touchscreen, they're not, and, and on and on. So this is really actually quite unique. Unique. And I think Garmin finally got it. They got that their existing units for people who are more casual cyclists, they weren't going to spend four and five hundred bucks for a color touchscreen device. And now that this is here, it's quick, it's responsive as you saw, it's easy to move around. I like this. I use this today as my primary bike computer. I had the Edge 1030 on here merely collecting power meter data, but that's it. I watched this screen the entire time, the entire route. And out here, I was I was happy with it. Um, it's not for me as my day-to-day -day bike computer because I have a power meter. Uh, but you know, I use Strava Live segments a little bit, but not a ton. Uh, so this, I'm as I said, I'm impressed. Well done, Garmin. You you got it. Any case, thanks for watching. Eurobike is upon us. This is kind of like with well, a second big announcement of Eurobike. The first was yesterday with Zwift and their Android support. Check out the video that Shane Miller, GP Lama, and I did up there on that. Uh, expect lots of announcements over the next couple days. If you found this interesting, whack that like button or the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Have a good one.